everyone. Today I'm at the University of Sydney. Some familiar faces, some new. We've got Peter, Liam and Raina. And today we're going to take a look at a couple of experiments. These are both versions of the double slit experiment and they're going to be at two vastly different price points. So we're just going to compare them and uh, you know see if it's worth it to put in the big bucks for this experiment. Mm. Now the double slit uh, experiment really looks at the wave-like nature of light because we are setting up an interference pattern by passing light through two narrow and close together slits. So let's see what we can make first of all on the cheap. We've got some little blades and we've got a little laser pointer. So the first objective <laughs> is to get two narrow slits in a piece of aluminium foil. If we have here on the camera, we have a few failed attempts at the double slit, so trying to get two really close together was not actually as easy as it might sound. Um, these are nowhere near close enough to set up the interference pattern. Mm. Little do you know if you use a ruler, I think it becomes easier. Now we want to move it just far enough that the aluminium is not going to tear itself apart. Cool. So yeah, they have to be very close together, otherwise it just acts like a single slit. So what a single slit diffraction pattern looks like is if we just pass the laser you know, through a single slit. We'd get something that was sort of high intensity in the middle and goes out uh, to sort of lower intensity or fainter towards the edges. For a single slit we also see a pattern of light and dark regions. Here is a comparison pic from Wikipedia. Since the slit is wider than the wavelength of light, we treat the wave at the slit as a large number of point sources and we get interference because of differences in path lengths from each contributing ray. Peter will briefly explain wave interference. Basically a peak and a peak coming together in a wave uh, creates a larger peak, right? Um, or you can get a peak and a trough, right? When they're, when it's pulled out of phase and they cancel out to form nothing to form zero, right? And you, you get that in uh, acoustic waves, right? So when you have a guitar and the, 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 the frequency is very close, right? And it starts beating, so it starts creating these peaks and troughs and they start combining in kind of interesting ways. But you can also get that with light with the single slit experiment. So while you're there, Special. we're trying to achieve something called the double slit. So how is that going to be different? Why, why would there be something different on the board? Uh, Liam? <laughs> <laughs> well, so, <laughs> so with single slit, we pass it through a slit. You'll have to make do with my drawings, okay? Uh, you can imagine, say, waves coming up, they come... We hope that they're planar. Yeah, we're going to call them waves like this, okay? Wave fronts move along. And when they hit this, they're going to come out, instead of coming through flat, they come out as waves. Kind of circular, like this. So draw a line through here. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. So that's our wall. Yeah, that's, yep. that's okay. our wall. This is our single slit, and this is the you know the ray of light coming from the yep. laser. And we, we get like you know, a bright spot here, etc. Uh, yeah, our peaks there. and troughs along there. A bit like it, so, like that. Sort of thing. Okay. Then you can draw out your double slit. I'm running out of board space here, but bear with me. You have plenty of boards there to deal with. <laughs> well, <yeah. laughs> um, and so our double slit is a double slit. <laughs> okay. I, I know, it's how many years of university? Yeah. Too many. Too many, I don't disagree. Our waves come along again, but this time they go through the slits together and you get an interesting drawing. So you basically get two times the other one. And they start it gets really hard. to eat to be <laughs> like that. Yeah. Sure. I'll go on more because I had four. And so, it doesn't show up too well on the board. I kind of want to see it come out as rays. But this then leads to a broken piece of chalk. But you actually described this in another video. Yeah, I, I, I do have a video about this. Um, and leading on to using single particles to do this but we're just using light at the moment um, and so like what Peter was saying before like peaks and troughs can either cancel each other out or 
uh, reinforce each other to get bright spots and dark spots that are now on the wall that are a result of, you know, two different diffraction patterns. It shows that uh, the, the, the light acts like waves, mm -hmm. right? It was actually a really fundamental experiment in the history of <laughs> yeah, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. science, for that matter. Yeah. For sure. And it's really cool that we can do it so you know, relatively simply. Mm. Well, let's try and <laughs> well, yeah. continue with that simple experiment. <laughs> okay, where's the foil? That's cool. Awesome. They're pretty close together. That's well good. done. Ho hopefully they're close enough. That well done. We get a good pattern. And so we're just taking a cheap laser. Just firing that onto the board. So that's still a single slit. Oh yeah, that was good, that was good. I can see it there. So yeah, there, there. Cameras? So yeah, I can see like a lot of bands of, of um, dark and light in there. Which oh, wow. looks distinctly different from the single slit. Wow, we yeah, we see that, that's cool. And I might be able to block one of the slits with my finger. The camera's definitely- oh, I was blocking it with my finger, it's good. <laughs> But yeah, that, that is a pretty good interference pattern for a piece of foil and a laser pointer. To me, it just looks like speckles. <laughs> to us, it looks great. <laughs> it looks very cool. It's very nice. I'm not sure how- How expensive is the laser pointer? You could probably buy this for like $2 on eBay. I suppose you'd have to buy a whole roll of this, right? So. Okay. Well, no, maybe you can just get it with alfoil from so oh. what, what is this very expensive looking alfoil? This is scientific that grade is, alfoil? That's aluminium <laughs> tape that you can buy from like most electronic shops like J-Car or oh, I was going to say Dick Smith, but <laughs> yeah. they don't exist anymore. Showing or your age eBay. there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. probably your best bet. We, yeah. Do we think kitchen foil would I, work? We can try it. I'd say it would probably shred. I think it'll shred. rip. Yeah, it's yeah, a problem. That's, yeah. Ripping is okay. probably... So, so how, much, slits in the how much would be the cheapest one? So oh, these usually cost about $20 for a roll. Okay, this is a small piece of that roll. <laughs> so, it's probably a couple of cents. Yeah. Probably a 10 cents, maybe? Yeah, let's go 10 cents. Um, scalpel? Yeah. I reckon you could pick one up for about five bucks. Yeah. Like, yeah, you want five, a good sharp one with a good blade. Five for a nice, yeah. good sharp one, and a laser pointer from eBay. Yeah, so we'll, we'll say five dollars. Five, five... And ten cents. cents. Ten dollars and ten, $10 cents. And ten cents. The bat and That's the ball experiment. together, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> That's a separate video. Um, okay. Very um, cool. I was pretty happy with that. Actually, I don't know if we can get much better than that double slit interference pattern because that was pretty nice. But we will try with our expensive Most setup. Most expensive setup so we could find. what do we have here? We have a much more expensive laser. Who knows the price point of this laser here? That is a 20 milliwatt helium neon laser, which will set you back something close to $2,000 for the laser and the power supply. Okay. Yeah. It's a very nice laser. Yes, yeah, so we have this, which is a series of precisely made double slits. Um, probably more accurate than ours, but get what you pay for. Um, <laughs> <laughs> really just two components that we're working with? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so, so this is about $2,000. This is about... Uh, buying a, a good set of double slits will be about $200. Cool. So, provided they're, they're very good. <laughs> oh, we didn't, we didn't count. The wall. We didn't count the wall. <laughs> you can do it on a wall, so it doesn't. You could substitute this for a, an actual wall, <laughs> yep. which could be the most expensive item of all. Yeah, buying a wall is quite hard. Yeah, especially in Sydney. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> but that's a common factor between both of them, so it's okay. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Do we need to provide a safety warning for this laser? Is this a this is do, do not, not do it at home? This wouldn't be an eye safe laser. I mean, it's not going to blind you instantaneously. But it will blind you over time. But yeah. we shouldn't put our heads down at the same level as it. Definitely not. It. And reflections can be an issue as well. As you can see, because we've got it lined up pretty much perfectly, the reflection is coming straight back to the laser, which is good for us. Thankfully, the restriction on uh, laser pointers is only for handheld ones, so we can get nice strong ones as long as they have uh, a key no, and a power supply. Can... Right, so there is now a professional double slit. See how these cameras pick it up? With two slits, very close. To I'm it. actually just going to turn off the lights, okay. just so we can get a beautiful cinematic montage of this. <laughs> Thank you. 
God, that looks amazing. Yeah, but like this is obviously much more. Wow. Stark. You can really see the interference pattern in the bands. What's with all of these? The ones above and below. That is more than likely just oil or scratches on the surface. I had cleaned it before, but it looks like it's come back a bit. With a vengeance. Quite an important experiment in physics because we're really looking at right here the wave like properties of light, which is something that, you know, when they were discovered, sort of blew people's minds. And so we can try to appreciate. Still blows people's minds. Yeah, it still, <laughs> still <laughs> totally blows my mind right now. Yeah, we can appreciate what we're actually looking at yeah. if you know some of the theory behind it. We, we have the helium neon laser. I believe that this was chosen not only because it sets up a wonderful double slit ex on the wall here, but also because it was nice and expensive and yeah. we wanted to really <laughs> taste the top level of experimentation right. here. So okay. is this the most expensive laser we could have used? It, could no, anything no. else do this job? No. Um, that we own? That we own, this is the most Definitely, expensive yes. laser. Um, it has a very narrow peak, so you get a very nice pattern. Uh, diode lasers can be just as expensive, but they're still their peak isn't as, as narrow, so you'll get a little bit more of a smudgy kind of pattern. The laser pointers are yeah. diodes. Yeah. I think I think the thing that's interesting to me about all of this is that, like, I, I know we're kind of doing this like cheap and expensive experiment as like a, a bit of a, a bit of a joke and a bit of a gimmick, but what I really love is that you can see fundamental properties of our universe, right? Like how, like what light is and how light works for, like with a really cheap laser and a scalpel and some aluminium foil, right? And like it's nowhere near as pretty as this, right? But you can still draw the same conclusions, right? And kind of the idea that the people who are experimenting with this for the first time, they didn't have lasers back then. Do they have lasers back then? What did they do? No. no. Lasers, lasers, lasers were like 1960s? Yeah. yeah, they were just collimated light and yeah. then Sunlight focused it. With some slits on mm. it and project it like a pinhole we could, camera. We could try doing that actually. Maybe, maybe <laughs> next time. <laughs> maybe next time. But yeah, I think, I think that's like, to, to me, that's one of like the wonderful things about physics is like you just get to play around. Like, like you, what you're experimenting on is, you know, everyday stuff. Right, and you, the fact that you can do it with really, really cheap equipment to find something so fundamental about light, that just kind of blows my mind. I'm curious <laughs> how this slit would actually go with our expensive laser here. Well, let's do some science and find out. Not and you don't want to use the aluminum to reflect the laser beam into someone's eye? <laughs> We'd rather not do that, yeah. I mean... You may, yeah, put it in white side. Actually, turn the key and turn it on. Bit more mechanical advantage here to create. Right, let's just leave it here. Moment of truth. Oh, yeah. Moment of truth. That's working. Um, From here, it's it looks hard to see just interference. I don't I'm know thinking that might be single. Could be single. Oh, that's a For a second there, there was something that's that looked. That's single. a beautiful single so slit, actually. I think the slit, oh. the slits are just too far apart. The beam is actually mm. too. If you hold it a bit thin, off, so hold it a bit forward. And what we might need to do is actually. It does that single slit beautifully. Bring though. this back. Because if we right. can diverge the beam slightly. Put it through. So we're just using the central maxima yep. from a good single slit pattern to try and make a double slit pattern. So the beam diameter of this laser is too small to work with these slits. All right. That's why we have professional. That's why we have bad lasers with bad <laughs> slits because these beams are huge and not elliptical. So for our purpose, the laser pointer was actually better. Yes. Yeah. Yes. 
just as we're considering what the final price points will be, we're thinking we'll probably need to include some of these rails and other things that actually yes. enable us to use this laser. So Liam is looking up a quote for a rail. Yeah. <laughs> what is this? Definitely the wrong type yeah. of optic. 50, 50 centimetre optics rail. 50 centimetre. And we'll add this as a MISC item on the quote. Okay. That's the wrong the sort, yeah. It's, <laughs> we're not getting in 3D printers. Look, I'm saying That's it's really what comes up. It's priceless because you know I'm, I'm not finding a price for it. It is old. I'll give it. What that. is what is the kind of the a reasonable price that we can do it at? Well, how, how much bucks? how much did our breadboards cost when we bought? Uh, they were about three hundred bucks. I think so. Yeah. It's yeah a precision cut, very nice. These ones move and stuff. So yeah. Yeah. Three to. And it would come as a set as well, probably, so... So 300 bucks. So 300 dollars. Three is pretty simple for me. So the total for the cheap experiment works out to be 5 plus 5 plus 10 cents. So it works out to be 10 dollars and 10 cents. Okay, I've got the chalk. The total for the fancy one is 2,000 plus 200 plus 300. That's 2,500. coming in at a significantly higher price point. But did we really gain that much more value from this? Yeah, I think this is, this is open for the discussion. <laughs> Let's, critics, get in here. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think the uh, $10 version definitely worked. Yeah, I think we saw the same thing that we needed to see, um, you know. Yeah. It's probably well, imagine if you were discovering the effect for the first time. I think the cheap one would have uh, definitely led us on to the fancy one. Yeah, I think, you know, <laughs> why would we ever need such a fancy one? Maybe demonstrating to a lot of people when we want something to be reliable. Mm. Maybe this is more reliable, but... Um, but the fact that you can do this with, well, you know, maybe a bunch of school kids. Given enough mm. space, you might actually be able to take some good measurements with the mm. cheap one. Yeah, and this yeah. is certainly do at home, so... Whilst we're not recommending you try this one at home, this one, have a shot. But also be <laughs> careful with your eyes yeah. and lasers and scalpels. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you for watching us play with some double slit experiments today. Hope you maybe learned something or got some inspiration to try yourself. Thanks to you guys for being in my video. I'll put some links down in the description to some of their channels and other things that they work on. And I'll see you next time. Thank you. I would like to thank Brilliant.org for sponsoring this video. Brilliant have a course on science essentials, including waves and interference. If you would like to learn about these topics in an engaging way, then I would encourage you to go to Brilliant.org slash Tibbies and sign up for free. The first 200 people to follow that link will also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. If you want something more advanced than the science essentials, you can also explore some of the most challenging ideas across math and science. The total for the cheap experiment works out to be $10.10. That's reasonable. Australian. Uh, so like a little bit cheaper US, so like $8 something, $7 something. And the total for the fancy experiment. <laughs> total is okay. Four. Three hundred. I think you've added a zero in there. I think you've added a zero yeah. there. No, no. 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 Should we do that again? <laughs> Hang on. Should we start that again? That's not two thousand. That's two hundred. Yes. Five hundred. Yeah. Twenty-five hundred. Let's just do that again. Let's just do that Where again. Four thousand. <laughs> We're just doing this part again. Clearly, you need me for this. <laughs> Alright, so... <laughs> Stay in school, kids. So, the total for the cheap experiment is 10 plus 5... It wasn't 10, we, we said that was 5, Jesus! I added wrong <laughs> too! <laughs> <laughs> the good thing about this watch, this board, is it shows where you... Exactly. <laughs> no one will know! No one will know, it's fine. Shh, okay. Today I would also like to thank my supporters on Patreon. I recently launched a Patreon and if you would like to have your name appear here on the end screen, you can follow a link in the description. 
I would like to thank every single viewer for your support in helping me reach 100,000 subscribers. I'm really grateful for that and I'm really excited to keep making videos for you.